Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees. I'm sitting at 76 degrees right this moment. Unbelievable. And most of the northwestern United States is getting a big snowstorm right now. Kind of crazy, huh? Now that snowstorm is going to bring us a bunch of rain tomorrow, but that's all right. April showers bring May flowers, and my bees love the flowers. So bring them on. Bring on the rain. So the last week's been pretty warm. Um, not quite as warm as it is today, but we've seen uh, a few days in the 60s, a couple days in the mid 50s. Um, a couple days this week, I did uh, resort to doing some more open feeding with my chicken uh, waterer as a feeder. And um, every single evening it was emptied and I had to refill it the next day. So I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable about maybe the possibilities of feeding inside the hive. Um, overnight temperatures are definitely above freezing now so that's something I would probably give a green light um, if you're experiencing these uh, above freezing temperatures at night. So it's been a very busy week for me. I'm trying to get prepared for queen rearing season and all of the splits that I am going to make. In the last couple weeks I've assembled a lot of the wax coated cardboard nukes and um, I even bought the stapler um, to help fasten them together and I'll tell you that stapler um, it was $39 I think 40 bucks for a stapler but it did make a huge difference in uh, how I feel about the box as far as its strength now them staples made a huge difference so if you're ever looking at Man Lake's uh, stapler and wondering if it's worth purchasing uh, yeah it's pretty nice it worked very well it's yet to jam up on me um, I'll be able to use it on more than just nukes. I'll be able to use it when I ship queens and put my cardboard boxes together for that. So it's kind of multi-purpose. Um, so just today, I got 100 deep frames to put together and um, 100 pieces of plastic foundation. So what I wanted to do today is show you how to assemble deep frames like a pro. That's right, even a beginner can do it like a pro. But there's one thing you're going to need and that's a jig, a frame jig. Now, if you're not sure what a jig is, a jig is not a dance. You're not gonna dance a jig. A jig is a device that can make doing something that you're gonna do a lot of a lot easier. For example, frames. Um, if you're just getting into beekeeping, be prepared. You're gonna see frames in your sleep. Yep, that'll happen. Rectangles, big ones, shallow ones, medium ones, yep. So what happens? You're going to make so many of them in your lifetime if you stay in beekeeping that it's just going to be second nature. So this jig that I'm about to show you is going to make it a lot simpler and uh, save you a lot of time. So what I want to do is I want to show you this jig and uh, show you how it works. I'm going to show you how to easily install plastic foundation and a groove top and groove bottom frame and uh, make it a lot easier for you to understand and uh, make you understand why you need one of these jigs. So check this out. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a frame making jig. This jig allows you to make 10 frames at a time. Just wham, bam, thank you ma'am. Move on to the next 10. Uh, I'm gonna take it apart here and just kind of show you how it's made real quick. It's got two screen door springs on each side. Um, you've got these uh, paddles on each side with a piece of padding. And then you've got these two removable pieces. Besides that, each side is made exactly the same, as you can see here. So now let me show you how this works. Okay, so let's begin by setting up our jig. The first thing I want to show you is that down here at the bottom, this crossboard is you want to take your uh, tensioner boards and pull them out and place them down there on both sides now what this does is it opens up a space on this side and it opens up a space on this side in those spaces we want to stick our end bars all the way across keeping them tight together all pulled nice and neatly to one side and I'm gonna pull them towards me now if you've ever put frames together one by one you know that uh, sure it can be done 
and that it is very time consuming. I'm not going to say that this isn't time consuming because it does take a couple minutes to set this jig up. But there's no way that you can compete with this jig because the time it takes me to set this thing up, you might have what if you're lucky? Two, three frames together? Well, I'm about to blow out ten. Okay, so after you get them all nice and tight, snug together, on one side you can see my seams are straight so that tells me they're pretty square. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift this back up. Put tension. That'll put tension against them and hold them in place. Same on this side. Push them all tight together. Ready to go. The next thing we're going to do, and I encourage anybody that takes the time to build frames to do it right. Get you a good bottle of Tight Bond 2 or 3. 3 is a little bit better than 2. Um, and glue all of your joints. You're going to be glad you did. They're going to hold up so much better. And you're going to really notice the strength difference versus just using some kind of a nail or a staple. So now I'm going to take and put a little bit of glue right in here on each one of these. And it ain't going to take me long. Okay, now I got me a little brush, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and smear some up on these edges. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our top bars all the way across. Okay, there's one. And just like that, they are now ready to be nailed. I am going to be using my air nailer, or brad nailer, with one inch wire nails. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put, really the nail is just to hold it until the glue dries in my opinion, because that's where all your strength's going to come from. But you do want to make sure that this top bar has seated into the end, or the end bars all the way before you fasten them. If you're debating on how many nails to use, here's my rule of thumb. I put two on the top and I do one on the bottom bar. Why do I do two on each side at the top? For this simple reason. This is the area where you're prying with your hive tool, not down at the bottom of the frame. So with the glue and the two nails, I feel a lot more confident in this joint. So that is the way I do it. Two in the top, one in the bottom on each side. Okay, those are now ready. Now we can take the whole box and flip it right over. Now we are ready to do our bottoms. I'm going to make sure they're all still tight together. They're not going to go together completely on the bottoms just because of the way uh, your end bars are shaped to allow B space between the frames. Rub a little bit of glue on each one. Okay, so now we'll take our bottom bar and push down on there. Now I don't have one out here, but it'd be a good idea to have a rag out here and maybe some warm water to wipe off this uh, excess glue that you're seeing here. But now those are ready and I am now going to go ahead and nail those on. But I'm just going to give them one nail. You can get going pretty fast with the air nailer. The one thing that you don't want to get too big of a hurry because what will happen is you'll get the staple gun in an angle or the nail gun and it'll shoot out the side and 
just kind of a pain to pull out. So take your time, make sure they're good and straight. Now to remove these from the jig, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lift the tensioner board back up here onto this, take the tension off of the frames. Lift that away, set it to the side, pull this board out, pull this board out, You've got 10 frames. Just like that. Perfectly square, ready to go. Ready for foundation. So the very first thing I wanna point out, um, this plastic foundation, and it's not just with uh, right cell. Um, I've noticed it with Pierco and a lot of the others. Um, you might have to look a little closer, but the corners are dotted or perforated. And the reason for that being is is you can break them away and snap them out. What that does, let me show you real quick with one of the frames I've already done. It allows a place, a passage if you will, on both corners for the bees to go through to the next frame. It's totally your choice whether you want to punch those out or leave them in. Personally, I have seen the bees use them and I know they're beneficial, so I'm gonna take my corners off. And with these uh, right cell frames, it seems you just need your fingers and not even you don't even need a pair of snips to cut them. So. so I've got my corners broke off. The frame or the foundation is now ready to be put into its frame. To put it into its frame, it's very, very easy. We're gonna take the bottom or what would be the top of the frame and put it down against the table. We're gonna take the foundation and put down in the groove. And then we're gonna come down a couple inches from the top of the foundation and push in. And that's going to allow the foundation to flex and it'll pop up in that groove. And see here, there you can tell it didn't go in all the way. There it did. When it moves back and forth freely like that, it's in all the way. Nice and secure, ready to go. I'll show you one more. Just to show you how quick it can go. Wham, bam, put this down in the top, push it over, done. Just like that, on to the next. Very, very simple. And uh, one thing I wanna point out with the premium foundation, this did cost a little bit more. I think this one box of 100 was $180. Um, the reason for that being um, it's got an extra coating of wax on it. The wax coating on any plastic foundation is what's going to get your acceptance level to be high or low. If it's just a piece of plastic and has very little wax on it, your bees are probably going to ignore it. If it's a piece of plastic like this and it's coated heavily, which I can feel the wax, it's sticking to my fingers, um, the bees are going to be all over it, especially if there's a good nectar source. Now, if you've got a lot of uh, frames that need drawn out, feeding is a good way to encourage that, one-to-one. -one. Now, up in the right-hand corner, um, I'm gonna link a video that uh, tells you how to recoat these plastic foundation. If that's something that uh, you need to do, if you've got some plastic foundation that just doesn't have much wax on it. So that's how you do it, folks. So what'd you think? Made it look pretty easy, huh? I tell you, um, on a good run, using that jig, I can do 10 frames in about eight minutes. That's less than a minute a frame, folks. You're not gonna do that without this jig. So if you're gonna be putting many of these frames together, if you like beekeeping and you plan on staying in it for a while, it's probably gonna be worth your time to buy one of these or make your own. As far as my preferences on foundation, I like the plastic foundation. Um, one thing I like about it is it's very, very durable. Um, on a good 90 degree day, you take out a frame of foundation that's just wax, maybe even foundationless, and let the sun hit that for a couple minutes, you're gonna see it start to tilt as you tilt the frame. It's gonna wanna come down and bend. It's gonna be very flexible because the sun heating up that wax. With the plastic foundation, it's very durable, like I say. You can leave it out in 
not leave it out in the sun. You can expose it in the sun for several minutes, have no flexing of the comb, stays nice and straight. Um, the one thing I do want to emphasize here, if that wax coating is thin or non-existent, your bees aren't going to do anything to a plastic foundation. They're going to treat it as a wall and they're going to walk around it. So keep that in mind if you have plastic foundation. Now, like I said, I'm going to link a video up here in the corner that's going to show you how I recoat plastic foundation using my own beeswax. So if that's something you're interested in, go up here and check that out. Um, I have no problem with wax foundation. Works very well. I like the wired wax foundation. The one thing I do not like about wired foundation in the brood box is it's very common for the queen to not want to lay in the cells that have wire running through them. I do not know why. Let me show you this frame of brood from last year and you're going to see every line where the wire runs through the foundation. The queen would not lay there. So keep that in mind if you're looking at the waxed, wired foundation. Um, for that reason, I guess I prefer the plastic because she does not skip anything as long as it's all coated in wax. So hope this video has been helpful and informative. If you like it, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for all the other beekeepers in the world to find it. And that's what we want, right? And if you haven't subscribed, please take a minute and do so. Make sure you click on the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. JCs Bees! Oh, I almost forgot. Next week, I'm going to be doing my first hive inspection. So make sure you check that out next Sunday morning, 7 a.m. Be there or be square.